good. We got company. Welcome to the post-apocalyptic future of 2010. We are talking Knight Rider 2010. This is a 1994 TV movie that was originally made as a pilot for a potential Knight Rider spin-off series. This is directed by Sam Pillsbury and stars Richard Joseph Paul as Jake McQueen, our leading man here. You do have a couple of recognisable faces from genre TV and movies, including Hudson Lyak in her debut role, who you may know from Xena Warrior Princess. Uh, you've also got Mark Pellegrino as uh, one of the bad guys, and our main bad guy is played by Brian James, playing this weird cyborg called Jared. Now, in the 1980s, Knight Rider was one of the hottest TV shows uh, being kind of regularly viewed by kids coming home from school of all ages. I was a big fan back in the day, and there have been a variety of attempts to reboot the series uh, throughout the years, some of which have made it to a short-lived TV show, others that didn't get past the pilot stage. And this is one of those. This was a, a TV movie that was originally made to hopefully spin off into a series of uh, you know the futuristic version of Knight Rider in a, in a post apocalyptic world. The interesting thing about this particular project compared to maybe the other Knight Rider kind of spin offs is this one has absolutely nothing to do with the original uh, series. It doesn't, it doesn't exist in that world. It has very little kind of connection in regards to um, anything really of that movie. The only thing here you've got is, is a guy who has a souped up car which has an intelligence. But how we can get to that point is very, very different. So what is the story? Let's discuss. So Jake McQueen, our kind of central hero, is a smuggler, but we know he's got a heart of gold because we see him help a couple of people uh, at the beginning of the movie. And he's living in, the, in this kind of post-apocalyptic world, this kind of desert wasteland, very kind of Mad Max. But we do have these hubs of kind of high society in these kind of cities. And within this city, there is this corporation who is run by Brian James's character. And they have a couple of business ventures, one of which is creating video games to uh, you know, keep the, the masses entertained. And one of the kind of the head developers of these video games is a character called Hannah, who happens to be uh, Jake McQueen's kind of girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. And then he also has this other business, which is harvesting human organs to do weird experiments with. Now, of course, McQueen comes afoul of this corporation. His girlfriend is murdered, but he is able to upload her consciousness into his souped up car and goes to war with this corporation. What will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. Does that sound exciting to you? Well, let's discuss. Okay. So let's talk about what I think works in this movie. Now this is a made for TV movie, and as such, obviously, it's not gonna be a particularly kind of violent or graphic kind of movie in any sense. And obviously it is kind of, you know, still riding on the uh, the Knight Rider name, albeit it's a very, very different kind of show. But I will say that it does have a little bit more violence in it than maybe some of the kind of the traditional kind of Knight Rider sort of show and kind of spin-offs had. Uh, for example, our, our hero car, is, 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 this one has a tattoo with guns and missiles and things like this, and we have kind of shootout, more in the line the lines of Airwolf, I suppose. So it has a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an edge. I mean, obviously there's no kind of real gore or, or, or bodies getting dropped so much because it is a, you know, a, a 90s kind of TV movie. But nonetheless, at least it has a, a, a scooch more edge than maybe some. And, a lot of people criticise this particular kind of spin-off for being, you know, very different from the original uh, the kind of Knight Rider show. But I actually do think that's a probably a plus because it allows this kind of this creative team to kind of do what they want really, and, and only have a very, very, uh, um, you know, a shell of a kind of an idea to work from. A, a kind of guy with a um, a car which has some type of 
personality in it and outside of that it's very different so it allows the kind of uh, to this uh, this movie to have a very different kind of flavor if you like um, so, which I think kind of works and, and there is some interesting uh, ideas in regards to technology here and again I remind you this is a 1994 TV movie but there's a lot of talk of kind of cyberspace and kind of internet based sort of things hacking into bits and pieces um, and for the time that was probably quite forward thinking I mean some of the stuff like you know being able to kind of put a device on your head and kind of virtually project yourself into the kind of the internet is all very kind of cyberpunk and not obviously something that is as of yet happened in our kind of real world but nonetheless there is some forward thinking in kind of regards to the um the, the kind of technology that maybe we have these days it also has a, a whiff of the kind of the mad max kind of um inspiration as well some of these kind of souped up cars and we have this kind of like um outside the kind of the wasteland kind of town which reminds you a little bit of kind of like mad max 3 for example and stuff like that so it does have these um uh these kind of little kind of like things that will remind you of kind of certain other properties brian james i've got to say is kind of an interesting character he plays this kind of bad guy jared is very eccentric and a little weird and i'm gonna say a little kind of like creepy at times and his uh, his performance is um you know very enigmatic shall we say and i thought i quite enjoyed him although he doesn't have a huge amount of screen time uh, to be honest with you uh, there's a couple of okay kind of, of sequences involving kind of stunts of cars and things like you probably expect um, for again for a kind of a uh, you know vehicular based movie okay so what doesn't work here's the big thing for me and this is this is this is by far and away the biggest issue with this film is that for a movie which is based on a Knight Rider spin-off there's very little car action in this film in actual fact the kind of the, the finished version of this Knight Rider car. I mean, it's not called Kit in this one. Uh, doesn't we don't doesn't even kind of get finished until maybe quarter of an hour, ten minutes till the end of the movie. That is when the kind of the consciousness is are kind of uploaded. And when we do have that, it really doesn't do anything. I mean, they could have not had that conscious uploaded really, and it probably would have more or less kind of played the same. And even prior to that. Uh, the car doesn't actually come into kind of the frame until you know an hour into the move an hour into this hour and a half movie we get our first glimpse at the actual car albeit it's not like another 15 minutes until it kind of gets its kind of intelligence and stuff like that so it's a very kind of like disappointing movie in that respect because you're probably going into this wanting a kind of an action-based uh, vehicular uh, you know movie which is kind of has elements of the Knight Rider Sort of TV show, but it fails to deliver and, and, and is more of a uh, too much of a kind of a talky movie. And we get a couple of like action sequences before that, but the crux of the show or the crux of this movie is you wanted to see this a particular kind of like uh, version of Knight Rider in action. We don't even get it until nearly the end of the movie, which I think was a big mistake here. Uh, it spends too much time kind of set, trying to set up somewhat of a kind of a convoluted plot with kind of too many characters um mcqueen as our central character you know we we, he's, we met, we're introduced to his kind of his brother his adopted father you know we've, we've got his kind of love interest who is uh, you know who we could have seen kind of human form before she's uh, before she's killed uh we've got these set out the bad guys and what they're doing we've kind of got all these kind of like his kind of mechanic friend who is uh you know makes all these kind of souped up cars you've got this kind of like futuristic little kind of town and what's going on there this other guy who kind of plays guitar who ends up being a kind of a psychic it's trying to juggle too many things and bear in mind you've got to introduce all of these kind of characters and then we've got you know brian james's character do it with, wanting to make video games and then, then he wants to kind of do um you know human harvesting so we have all of these kind of elements that are introduced and because there is just a lot of going on nothing is really ever kind of fleshed out so it's the barest minimum of, of kind of in regards to kind of narrative with uh you know no real kind of focus and what i suspect viewers want there's just not enough of that and it's and what we do get is too far into towards the end of the movie and even when we do get it it's not all that spectacular i don't think the kind of the the ai version of this kind of car which is you know 
is the miner a real person, if that makes sense, is introduced too late and then doesn't really doesn't really have any knock-on effect of the actual kind of story itself. Um, outside of that, aesthetically, I mean, some of the stuff here, but again, this is a 1994 TV movie, but it really just looks like a 1995 TV movie as well. This kind of like post-apocalyptic kind of town is just so cheap looking uh, with all these kind of like extras kind of like mincing about with their kind of like, you know, typical kind of like wasteland kind of costumes on with weird makeup and stuff. It just looks, it just looks so silly to be honest with you. And the, the character of um, McQueen, who is our kind of central character, isn't kind of as likeable or as interesting as Hasselhoff in the role of Michael Knight. Now, I think uh, Hasselhoff was a big part of why that TV show was so popular, because he was kind of like, you know, quite adored as that kind of leading man. And when you compare the two, this guy, I mean, I know we've only got one movie compared to seasons of the original Knight Rider, but if you do even look at the first couple of episodes of the original Knight Rider, this is not that charisma there, uh, I don't think. I think he does, does a terrible job, to be honest, but I, can, I think he's uh, unfortunately victim of just too much kind of going on in, in kind of uh, uh, this kind of particular kind of plot and isn't giving a, a hell of a lot to do, which doesn't make him all that kind of interesting, to be honest. There's also some quite horrible kind of special effects and, and things like this. There's an action sequence um, at the beginning of the movie where McQueen is driving this uh, monster truck and you know he's doing his kind of people smuggling things and there's these kind of border guards that are trying to stop him. It's a you know it's a quite a horrible sequence in regards to sort of special effects and stuff. Even for 94 standards, it looks yeah, I can imagine this would have looked pretty crap. I have seen this movie before, uh, but I just wanted to kind of obviously rewatch it for this review as I've not really remembered it all that much. Um, you know, it's it's an interesting attempt, and I, I have to say, I applaud the effort to try to do something a little bit more daring with the kind of the property and kind of straying uh, that far away from the original idea of Knight Rider. But I think a, a post-apocalyptic kind of movie like this, it needs to have more action. The action that we did have to be sooner, and I really I don't think it, it, I don't think it it kind of works as a kind of a kid show. To be honest, it's just lots of kind of you know, browns and deserts and things like that. Not visually, it's kind of a little dull. Um, and uh, there's not really a huge hook to go into the kind of the next episodes, if you like. There's no ongoing bad guy kind of set up or anything like that. Um, it, it kind of isn't all of that interesting, to be honest with you. So for me, this one is a little bit of a, of a miss. Uh, maybe if you really kind of are interested in Knight Rider and haven't seen it, you may want to check it out or you, or you just want to watch uh, Mad Max style kind of post-apocalyptic movies. It's a 3 out of 10 for me. Have you seen it? Uh, would you be interested in it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing it next time. Bye for now.